Hey guys, it's Robin, R Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. I've had several of you ask for a life update video because you wanted to see how Rob and I are doing, how he's getting along with his chemo, and what's been happening with us in the last few weeks. I finally have a few moments of time that I can sit down, work on my little snowman here with you, and give you a bit of an update. Now, if you've been watching my Whip It Wednesdays, you'll know you haven't seen this snowman in a couple weeks. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and work with him. I've wanted to. He's been calling my name, but yeah. So I get to work with him a little today while chit-chatting with you. Now before we get into the life update, I want to just explain what this little seahorse guy here is for. After my last video, I had several questions about it. it seems some of you have never seen a needle minder before. Now I hadn't really heard about him before either until I started cross stitching again. But no, you haven't seen any cross stitch because while I did start it again, I also stopped it pretty quick. I have a few half finished and three quarters finished projects that eventually I'm going to have to get to and finish. But I found that even though I love the look of cross stitch and I love the idea of cross stitch, my eyeballs just can't handle going from the, the little squares on the paper to the little squares on the fabric. I find I just, I prefer to do embroidery and just follow the little lines and make designs and go free form than I do enjoy the cross stitch. Even counted cross stitch, you still have to kind of pay attention to where you're at and what the colors are. But anyway, this is a needle minder. This is a fabric covered button. This, it has this really fun seahorse. I don't remember. This is one of those um, really popular people that do fabric that everyone loves to collect. And I have no idea what her name is at the moment or his name. And then it has two earth magnets on the back. Now, if you notice, see how these have some chips on them? Because you have to be careful. They're very powerful. And if they get, I can't remember even if this one came to me chipped or not. It was given to me by a friend. But you're not supposed to do what I'm doing right now. You're not supposed to let them slam together but what the thing is is you put one magnet on the back and one magnet and your your covered button on the top some people do dominoes some people do jewelry like pins and uh, the metal buttons that you'd wear with the little metal tab that goes through your shirt and stuff but what this is for is while you're cross stitching or you're embroidering if you have to take a minute for a second you put your needle on there it's a needle minder it minds your needle while you're waiting and stuff some cross stitchers will leave their needle right on there and store their project in their Ziploc or their, their project bags and just leave it there. But I never leave, I don't leave my needle on there. I don't leave the needle minder on there either. I take it off and I put it on one of the metal buckets that I have hanging up from the curtain rod with the S hooks that I showed you guys once before. This isn't too bad, but I don't feel that it holds my needle all that much. I do like it when I'm working on a project like this so my needle's just not stuck somewhere. I'm not sticking it into the arm of the couch or something like that. I know right where it's at. But it's really easy for one of the cats to come by and knock it, for a kid to just grab it, even though I don't have kids in my house right now. But you see, I'm just gently tugging and it comes right off. There are other types of needle minders that have a little pin cushion here where you can stick your pin through. And some of them, when you put it right onto the magnet, it sticks much better. But this is a metal button with fabric covering it, and that might be the difference. But I don't know. I love seahorses, and I like the color orange, so it can just sit there, and I don't mind that it's not super secure. Because as I said, I'm not going to leave it on my project. If you look these up on Etsy, you will see many, many people who sell them. If you check it out on YouTube, there's always good videos everywhere and you can just make your own. And not only are they good for holding your needle, but if you just put one magnet on it and you skip this backup one here, this can go on your refrigerator. These hold a lot of papers. They're strong for that. But he just looks cute there. I don't have a big collection. Some people have dozens and over hundreds of them. I think I saw one video on floss tube. Floss tube is a section of YouTube where it's where the cross stitchers like to hang out. So you can put floss tube in your title, your description, or your tags, and other people will find you. So if you're looking for cross stitchers, you can always search for floss tube on YouTube and you'll find them. 
Now, we didn't come to discuss any of that stuff today. This is all about me, right? So what has been going on with me and Rob and Rob's cancer treatment? To put it bluntly, the chemo has been kicking his ass. It's, it's been a few weeks since I've given you an update, so I'm going to take you back just a little bit. And let's go back to the first week of February to the week of my birthday. Rob had gotten through two cancer, two of his chemo treatments. And come to find out, it was explained to us when you start getting chemo. Now, this makes a lot of sense. They give you an extremely high, the highest dose they can possibly give you. And then they start to taper you down until you get to the end of your chemo or you get to a point where the doctor feels that that's the right level for you. I guess it's harder to start lower and then give you increasing dosages. It might make it worse on the side effects. So apparently the highest dose was just a way bit too high for Rob. And it's mostly because his body had already deteriorated. He was so dehydrated because he'd been vomiting for probably three weeks every day, a good 10, 15 times a day, if not more, because we just never could seem to get control of that. So, okay, so he's gotten two chemo treatments. We went in one day, they're like, okay, come on in and just get some IV fluids to make sure we're keeping you hydrated because he was having problems. His blood pressure would go sky high. Then his blood pressure would bottom out and go really, really low. So they said, okay, you're getting dehydrated with being sick all the time. Here's some different nausea medicine. Let's try this and come on and get some IV fluids. Well, we came in. Rob had been so weak at that point that I had started bringing him in in a wheelchair. You know, I'd park the car, go get a wheelchair, put him in it, bring him in, and blah, blah, blah. So we'd waited. Anytime you go in, you have to wait. It usually takes like... It was taking in the beginning like five minutes to get in. Now it's taking like 20 or 30 minutes to get to the back of the uh, the cancer center. So we're waiting our turn, and I could see Rob was just kind of, he, was, he wasn't looking too good. He, was, he couldn't stay awake. He was really kind of groggy. So when you go back, the first thing they want to do is put you on a scale. Well, he couldn't stand up to go on the scale because he's just too tired, and he wasn't coherent, and he was severely dehydrated. So they take them to the next place, and that's where they, if they're going to do some, if they want to do some blood work, if you don't have a port, that's where they, they can put a needle in and get some blood or whatever. They're always asking you if you have a port. I don't know why. They don't really do much back there except for take your blood pressure, take your pulse, take your temperature. Well, apparently Rob freaked everyone out because they could not find his pulse, and they could not find his blood pressure. So we went straight to the back to the nurse's. So I'm guessing that the people that do your pulse and stuff are like your, your the assistant, maybe the CNAs at the hospital versus the RNs. So we went to the back to see the actual nurses. And I'm not belittling the ones that do your blood pressure and stuff. I just think they're at a different level and definitely a different location and what they're responsible for. So like, well, we're going to go back to the nurses and we'll let them figure this out, okay? I'm like, okay, whatever. So we go back to the nurses. They could not get a blood pressure on them and they could not get a pulse on them either. Now, we knew he wasn't, like, not to be morbid, but we knew he wasn't dead because if you ask him, you know, what's your name, he'd give you his name, and you ask him his birthday because that's what they always ask. They give him his birthday, and, you know, they, he could tell you who the president was and stuff like that, but he just couldn't stay awake, and he couldn't hold his head up. So it gotten so bad. This was, oh, this was Tuesday, February 5th. They ended up calling an ambulance because his pulse was just so low. And they couldn't find the pulse. They couldn't find the blood pressure. When the paramedics came in, they couldn't find either pulse or blood pressure either. So the nurse and I, you know, he's got a uh, the nurse for the clinical trials. That's his main lady and stuff. So we were, okay, when it's a serious, intense situation like that, Rob and I tend to joke around. So her and I were just kind of telling jokes about how, well, we know he's not dead because he's talking to us. And every time you poke him, he's like, what, what, what? Stop, leave me alone. So we knew he was, we knew he was in bad shape, but he was still reasonably okay. Now I know at any given time, a person can just go from relatively okay to a serious situation, which was why they called 911. Now I have learned that if any chance, I would rather have him call 911 from the cancer center than from my house because the nurse had already printed out Rob's records. She had a list of all his medications and his past blood pressures and stuff like that. So they had all that. I didn't have to answer any questions. I just had to say, yes, 
you know, she's like, and this is his wife. And I'm like, hi. And that was like my whole conversation with the uh, EMS guys. Really, really easy. I've called an ambulance before for Rob because he's, you know, he's always had a history of one thing or another going on, but nothing quite this serious. And it's always been a lot of conversations because they need that information, right? I got no problem with them needing it. I'm just thinking next time I'm going to just, if we even think we're going to need to go to the hospital, I want to go up to the cancer center, which is only a few miles away, and let them call because they had all that information and I didn't have to do nothing. I just got in my car and I went to the hospital and waited for them because I actually left before the ambulance did crazy. There was two patients that day that got called for an ambulance and they were both there at the same time. But anyways, the paramedics finally put some special little contraptions on, and at one point his pulse was 12. 12. Now normally he's been running anywhere from 70 to 115, so 12, that's what, 12 beats a minute? That's crazy. And then they got his blood pressure. His blood pressure was 59 over 24, which was why they couldn't get a reading on it. And it's just... They called him decompensating. He used to be he used to be almost 300 pounds, and then he lost some weight in a good way by exercising and watching what he was eating. And then in the last year, he's lost well, he's down to 154 pounds now. So he's almost lost, you know, like he's he's lost like a whole person, a little kid. What would they call that? Maybe uh, an eight-year-old or something like that. Whatever weighs about 70 or 80 pounds. I think just before Christmas he weighed, he weighed just around 200. So since Christmas he's lost probably about 45, 46 pounds. He kind of, the poor guy, he's, he's all skin and bones. He looks, you know, there, there's nothing to him. He really looks like when you see the stories of the anorexic people and stuff like that, unfortunately that's what he looks like because he hasn't been able to keep any food or liquids down, no nutrients in. So we get to the hospital. He spent Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So my birthday was Thursday the 7th. So I spent most of my birthday hanging out with him at the hospital. It took, probably took two or three days for him to actually become coherent enough to realize what was going on because he'd gotten so dehydrated they said that he was low on he was low on the salt he was low on he was low on calcium he was low on potassium he was low on words that i don't remember that i don't really recognize anyways because this doctor was being really good and kind of giving us the whole rundown basically all of his little numbers were off I call them as Gatorade numbers because when you're a runner and you're out exercising or something, you use Gatorade to replenish those electrolytes and stuff like that. So that's what he was kind of low on all of that good stuff. So they had two IVs going at a time and they had it going like triple time as fast as they possibly could get it into him just to get his blood pressure up and get him back to being a little coherent. So we went through all that. They gave us some really good anti-nausea medicine. That's what we learned at which one works for him. Got home, went back to our stuff, and then he ran out of that medicine, and they gave us a different one to use when that one was gone. And while it worked, it didn't work all that well. So we struggled some more again with that, with the, the, um, the nausea and the vomiting and stuff. So he went through all that again. Last week... I think we should stop going in on Mondays and we should stop seeing this one lady in the vital statistic area because she's the one that can always not find his blood pressure and he always seems to have a problem on a Monday because, you know, you're coming off the weekend. So we were there. You see, I think it was just last Monday. He was getting all his stuff done. We, we went and did some to do testing for blood work to see how that was going. And that's when they, they took his they took the little the little IV out of his port and we're getting ready to go and he stood up and he almost went down. They put him in a wheelchair, started talking to him, and the poor guy just passed out. Because his blood pressure once again tanked and went so low. This time luckily they, they could read it, so it wasn't that bad. So we got some more IV fluids in him and it perked him back up a little bit. And we've since learned and convinced Rob that we have to go up to the cancer center every day of the week. So 
other than this week coming up, we have some special things going on this week. But Thursdays are chemo days. And we usually go in about 9 in the morning, and we're there all day until about 4 or 4.30 in the afternoon. It's a really full day. And now every afternoon, we're also going in for some IV fluids to keep him from being too dehydrated. And I've already noticed that it seems to be helping him a lot. He's not perfect. He's still weak, and he's still tired and all that because he's got a long way to go. But it is helping, so that is really good. That's a blessing there that the IVs are going to do that much improvement. So that's basically how it's going to be for us for a while. We're going to be going up every day of the week. In the afternoons, we're just going to spend... The IV fluids take about an hour and a half to actually go through the pumps and get into your system. But then it takes, like I said, you guys sit there in the waiting room for 20 minutes before they call your name and they put the little, you get a little hospital wristband and then they, if you have any paperwork, you do all that. Then you go back and you get weighed and you get your blood pressure and your temperature. Then you have to sit in a chair and wait another half hour for them to access your port. And then sometimes you got to wait another half hour for them to take you from the place where you access your port across the room to where you sit in a chair to get your IVs. So you add all that up together, and that hour and a half IV is more like a three-hour visit each day. But it is really just kind of like freaking out the animals because they're on a different routine now. And it's like... When, when dad's home, he's just, you know, Rob, we call him dad to the animals, too. When daddy's at home, he's just kind of like sleeping or sitting in his chair, and he doesn't want to be pestered, and he's not playing with them, and he's not doing his usual stuff, so they're kind of getting a little confused. And whenever I come home and if Rob goes off to his room to take a nap or something, I have all three cats and the dogs surrounding me. I could be here in my craft room, and they are all over me. Because they're afraid that at any given time, like when he was in the hospital, there was days and days where they were just home. And there wasn't always someone to come over and hang out with them. Because, I mean, come on, they're really, they're not children, they're cats and dogs. Normal people go off to work every day, right? Now, like I said, this week's going to be a little different. We're going to do the IV fluids. We'll do that all week long. On Thursday, Rob has a pain pump for his back because he has a really bad back. He's fallen off a couple roofs in the past doing construction. So he has to have a pain pump that puts medicine right into his spinal column and stuff. But just like any other device that they put in your body, it's got a battery in it, and it's only going to last five or six years, and then you have to have it removed and put a new one in. So we're doing that on Thursday. Even though the actual procedure is only 15 minutes, because they only have to take the device out and put the new device in. They don't have to mess with any of the, 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 the little cords and the tubes and all that stuff to go everywhere, so it's not that long process. But that 15-minute procedure, you know you've got to get there. It takes like an hour and a half before and a couple hours afterwards. And once they put Rob to sleep, he ain't going to wake up. That man likes to sleep. He's tired. They give him some of that good sleeping drugs, and they're going to have to struggle to get him awake. We already know how that's going to be. And then we do chemo again on Friday. So by the time the weekend comes, we're like, close all the curtains and lock the doors. Don't tell anyone we're at home because we are hiding from everybody. We just want to be left alone. We just want to relax and not have to worry about running to the store. I try to do any grocery shopping we need ahead of time, or I just have it ordered in or something. Because I, I don't want to leave the house either. I do enough driving to and from all week long that I just don't want to do it on the weekend. So that's basically it. Um, I guess we could say Rob is in, uh, he's in bad shape. He's struggling, but I think we're starting to turn the corner. 
knock on wood, I think we're going to start to turn a corner. I see this, the IV fluids every day are worth the trouble that it is to go up there and get it. I think it's helping him out, even though neither one of us like to do it. I mean, granted, I'm not the one that's going through the process, but I do have to sit in that chair. And I know you guys say just take a craft project. And on my Whip It Wednesday, I'll show you what I've been working on. But I do have, I have a problem with chronic pain. I have problems with my shoulders and my neck. And sitting in those chairs all the time is just not the most comfortable thing in the world. So it tends to accumulate the pain throughout the week. So that by the time we get to Saturday, I'm like, ugh. But that's okay, because it's going to be worth it in the long run. Nobody's ever going to like, no one likes the process of going through chemo. It's not, the reasoning behind it is never fun, and the process itself is not fun. But it's one of those things that, if you want to keep hanging out here on planet Earth, then that's what you got to do, right? Sometimes you just have to do the hard work in order to get the rewards. Oh, and there's not many people. There's not fun people watching. Most of the time, the family members that are with the chemo patients, they're sleeping. The chemo patients are sleeping, and they don't want to be bothered, and I don't blame them. So I kind of just bring, I bring you guys along. I bring YouTube with me. I put my little tablet up and my headphones on. I bring a knitting project. That's usually where I can sit down sometimes and get some comment answering done. See what's going on with everybody else out there in the world. Everybody always asks if we're taking care of ourselves and if I'm taking care of myself. And I, I guess it's a yes and a no. I'm doing the best I can. You know, my grandma always said, do the best you can with the tools you have on hand, right? I'm doing what I can and I'm learning as I go. And I'm, alter I'm altering and changing things as needed. That's not going to work. I'm changing up things as I need to make sure I am staying as healthy as I can, as rested as I can, and uh, I'm using my crafts when they're not irritating me like this. I just want to get that one more stitch. Anyone else do that? You just want one more stitch out of that piece of thread. It's not like thread's all that expensive, but still. I want my money's worth, right? So I'm using, <laughs> I'm using you guys and I'm using my crafts as my stress reliever. That's something I've always done anyways. I know knitting and embroidery like this really kind of calms me down. Keeps me from going off the deep end. And I think it's like that way for most of us. Ha! See? I got it. I think we all kind of do that because that's part of what the crafting is for. It's very, it's very relaxing. It's creative and... So I am, I am taking care of myself. I uh, didn't, didn't always do the best eating that I can, but I'm doing what I can. It's kind of hard. I don't want to make things that make the house smell for Rob because, you know, when you're nauseous, you don't want to smell, you don't want to smell strong scents and things like that. So I'm doing the best I can there. Because it's not just like you can't cook. When you have someone that's in the house that's nauseous all the time, not only can you can't cook, but you can't just buy like first of all I have food allergies so I can't just buy restaurant food but I can't like cook food at my kids house and bring it here because it's still going to smell the house up by bringing the food in and if I reheat it in the microwave the same situation it's going to make it kind of stinky and the longer I've gone now without actually eating too many real meals I kind of like don't really have that much of an interest for certain foods myself either I am eating I found I have some power packed muffins that I make that I put a lot of good nutrients and ingredients in to make sure that I have something healthy in my system. And there are actually some of them are in a little cancer cookbook that we received. It's good for nausea and it's good for this and it's good for that. And it's not, it doesn't say it's good for weight gain. So that's a good thing for me because I don't need to gain weight. Rob does. So I'm to make sure that if I make things for him, that they're not for me. I definitely don't need the extra calories.
My daughter and I, we were chatting the other day, and I was telling her I'm really quite surprised that I'm not eating junk food. I'm not eating chips and soda, and I'm not eating candies and McDonald's and stuff like that. But because I'm not sitting down and eating what I would normally eat, and so for me, I've been kind of eating muffins. Like I said, they're not they're not sugary cupcakes. I'm eating pumpkin ginger muffins and blueberry muffins and oatmeal muffins, and I make sure that I keep my ingredients low so that there's not a lot of sugar. I replace the oil with applesauce and the little tricks like that that I do naturally anyways. I add in flax and I add in chia seeds. And I make sure I have, uh, I have numerous vitamins that I'm taking, multivitamins and regular vitamins. Getting all my B's and stuff like that. But I was telling my daughter that since I've been eating, I haven't been eating like chicken breasts and rice. I mean, I have been having some rice and veggies here and there, but not my regular diet. That I'm kind of almost like craving all those bad things. I want cookies and I want chocolate and I want I want fried foods and I'm not necessarily craving McDonald's or Wendy's, but I'm craving bad for me things like that. So I thought it was quite interesting that if you change your diet up a little bit like that, that your body just automatically craves those bad things. So I went out and I picked up some, I, I really enjoy salad, so I did pick up some salad stuff. So I am trying to alter what I'm eating to make sure that I'm gonna have the energy for everything that I need to do to help Rob in everything that he needs to do. I tell you one thing that's driving me crazy is all the different medications. And everyone wants to know what medication you're on and then it seems to be changing almost weekly while we're trying to zero in on what's gonna work for him. So I'm like, is this one a six hour one or is this one an eight hour one? Wait, this is once a day, twice a day, before a meal, not with meals. It's just a lot. I had to download an app to help keep track of medication, which is not anything I've had to do before. Oh, I don't know if I like that. Eh, it's all right. So yeah, it's been a bit crazy just trying to keep everything straightened in my head. You guys that are going through this, I'm sure you already know this is, can't be anything different from anyone else, right? Except for when his body's doing crazy things. It's just surprising to know, like, I think his body knows how to read. Because when the paperwork we get for the chemo, it says that these are the possible side effects. His body's like, yep, I got them side effects. I'm like, really, body? Come on. You have to have every one of them? You can't leave a couple for somebody else, right? I mean, we are putting toxins inside his system. I'm not surprised that there's going to be repercussions. But hopefully we won't know for a while until, like all, they say all his numbers are looking good. They were really excited with all this blood work this week because apparently all the things that are supposed to be happening are happening and they're doing good things. So that's a good thing. I'm waiting for the CAT scan so that they can measure the lesions and the tumors and see how big and little and whether anything's grown or shrunk. That's, in my head, that's how I can tell if things are working. But there's going to be a few weeks before we do anything like that. But I wanted to come in and give you guys an update. And I wanted to say thank you to everyone for all of your thoughts and prayers. And I want to put my thoughts and prayers out there for everyone else who's been telling me that they're going through something similar or they're going through chemo. I always knew it was, it was harsh. I knew it was a tough road. It was a up, uphill climb all the way. You are actually in a war. You are battling a terrible disease. But until you're actually seeing it, now like I don't even know the whole con part of it. I can only see as Rob's going through it. I'm not going through it, so I can't compare it to that. But just witnessing it on the side. Because when my father went through it, he kept us kids, we were all adults. So he kept us all away from it, so he didn't want us to know how bad it was. So for all of you guys going through this struggle, I'm thinking about you. I, I'm I'm behind you. I'm rooting you on because it's a tough battle. Gonna make everyone stronger at the end, right? So I want to thank all of my new subscribers, and I want to thank all of my Patreon members, my 
Patreon patrons. They make it really difficult to say that. For all of that, you have joined me over on Patreon. I really appreciate it. I appreciate everyone who likes and comments on my videos. It's nice to know you're not on your own, you know? I'm going to keep chatting until I get to this last French knot. Well, not French knot because I don't do those. I do the colonial knots. But I don't want to leave this row um, unfinished. I want to make sure I finish this up before I let you guys go. Ay, ay, ay. Self-imposed rule here. And then I feel like I've got to rush through it, which is just crazy. The things we do to ourselves like that. There's no rush. I'm just glad that I got this time to actually get this whole long section done while chatting with you guys. Because as I said, I haven't touched my snowman in a couple weeks. Once I finish my next take-along project to the cancer center... I'll show you that, like I said, on Whip It Wednesday, you'll see the, it's the shawl that I'm working on, the gray shawl. Once I get that to stop taking that with me, because let me tell you, I'm really getting tired of working on that shawl because it's like, I take it, that's the one and only project I take to the chemo center all the time. So I'm forced to work on it. So that makes me finish it, right? Which is great, but I'm getting tired of working on it because it's a really big shawl. Now, while I'm finally to the point where I've added the pink in and I can enjoy it, I want to get it finished so I can take this guy with me to the chemo center and I can work on him because I want to get him finished even though basically here in Florida, it's already, we've already hit 90 degrees. I'm not bragging and I'm not complaining. It's just we've hit some record highs. We never have hit 90 ever this early in the year. So winter here is gone. Uh, the thought of a snowman is just not interesting me anymore, but I love working on this project. So I'd like to get it finished so he'll be ready to go up when we get close to winter next year. So I want to thank you all for hanging out with me. I don't do too many life updates like this, but if you do like the videos you've seen, please go ahead and think about subscribing to the channel and click that little like button down below. It really does help the channel out. It shows YouTube that people are interested in it and they'll suggest it to other people. If you have any friends or family that you think might be interested in these videos, please go ahead and click that little share button and share it with them. And until my next video, I'll see you later. Bye.